buongiorno from Italia. We have just landed in Italy and it's a very lovely and humid 24 degrees. Hopefully you can see little puppy, hashtag Ida the Guider, lying on the floor chilling out. My partner is off to grab the keys because we decided to hire a rental car. I just standing up clearly means that he's on his way back. But yes, we had a very enjoyable flight and I will check in with you very soon. Take care. Arrivederci. Hey guys, this is our Airbnb. In front you've got two sofas, one fabric and one leather. A nice coffee table. There's some interesting artwork on the walls here, and this one's sort of painting of sort of the scribbled haired man smoking a cigarette with a green background. Got a TV with Netflix on, which is quite handy. It's quite hard to navigate when it's in Italian, but you get the gist. Some more strange artwork. There's a window in the bottom right. All the windows have shutters. This one looks out onto a sort of nice little garden. Um, some more artwork. On the left, we've got the little kitchenette sort of area. You've got some nice lights with some fake leaves which do look quite nice. Um, here's the small kitchen area. Don't have any kettles in Italy so we've just got two coffee machines. Um, my host has left us a nice packet of pasta and a pot of sauce in a true Italian style. So here we look out onto sort of the car bar but in the background you can actually see all the mountains which is quite a nice view. You can see them from wherever you go in the city. Straight ahead you've got the bedroom and on the right is a bathroom. It's quite big, spacious, got a large shower as well. Into the bedroom, got Sassy on the bed. And then this lady in the hint her bed with her cooling mat. So it's quite a nice big bedroom as well. So for a one bed flat. So yeah, it's a quite a nice Airbnb. I host for really great when we're getting ahead, didn't mind us coming in at like half past one in the morning. It's quite rare with their B and B's, I think. Just some more shredding artwork. It's a, it's a unique style. So yeah, that's our Airbnb, and we're definitely thinking about staying here again, or at least at least using Airbnb again. So hope you enjoyed the little tour. Bye. There's a cathedral on the left, I think. Hi, Dad. Not today. Come on then. Right round. Ooh. Hold the camera up. Point it up. Point up. There. The cathedral. Uh, the cathedral. I just stop turning me in circles, please. Right, straight on. See, this is why I love European cities. Is they all have really pretty music playing in their squares, like every day. I do find the way, please. Good girl. Hmm? Oh, right. So I've been informed by my tour guide. Hello. <laughs> that this is the map that we um, came to when it was raining on like the Monday. Um, so I'm gonna scooch back and show you it. Um, yeah, basically, like wherever we go. It's very rare to see not only accessible but completely tactile versions of an entire city or square or town and um, it has braille and everything, it's really really cool and I'll put in some footage of that. Oh, okay. In the centre. In the centre, right. Wow. Okay. And then he moved it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really impressive. And here you can you can read it if you if you do it here you can read it. I can't really tell you in Braille. I can only English Braille. It's <laughs> <laughs> written everything in Italian. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> but it's just quite. It, it blows us away. Like you know, we live in the UK, first world country, and I could go to so many monuments, and none of them have that. So to come to a different city, um, in a different country, and they actually like go out of their way to make an entire monument. Uh, completely tactile is just really cool.
Here's some slow-mo footage of the Ponte Alto Gorge that we visited in Trentino. It's got a really cool history. In the 1500s, the city was constantly being flooded, so what they did is created giant waterfalls of over 40 meters. This is now a massive tourist attraction as part of Trentino, and we actually managed to hike down to the smallest part of the gorge itself and watch and touch the water flowing, which is really cool. The first ever Traverse Creator Awards was held in the beautiful Mart Museum in Trentino. I was kindly given a touch tour by Susanna and Flaminia of the modern art in the museum itself. If I take your elbow, then I can follow with how you go. Sassy takes Susanna's elbow and they walk around an igloo made of twigs. It's about three meters in height. So this is a uh, reproduction of a famous uh, history uh, taken from the Bible. Okay. Uh -huh. The Daughters of Love. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. If you yes. uh, would like to touch, you can. Mm -hmm. And Flaminia explain you uh, the, the, the print. Yes. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You can see that this artist of the return to order mm -hmm. use a linear perspective. A linear mm -hmm. perspective that was invented by Filippo Brunelleschi mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the beginning of the 15th century. Mm -hmm. They wanted to combine modern elements with mm -hmm. elements of the past. Okay, so okay. in particular the portraiture of Titian, Raphael, okay, mm -hmm. the masterpieces of the Italian Renaissance of the 15th century and 16th century. I wasn't really expecting it to be honest. I was too busy remembering some of my lines. But this wouldn't be possible without all the hard work you guys have done, so we can't take it. Thank you very much. I'm going to take this in a minute. Usually we're like, yeah, we did do a great job. But this time, it, it really is the guys from Trentino. I just want to say thank you so much to the Trentino team. I don't know. Where's Han? And every time we do uh, one of these events, we just come on and help us for like a week or so, and they're friends with us the whole year. I think my lady's a friend. Um, so, Natalie and my lady as well. I don't know where my lady is, though. She's the bottom. Oh, no, she's here. She's going to drink for me. So, thank you so much. Thanks again. Day two of Traverse Conference and we are heading into the Piazza Duomo. And straight on. Let's go. Keep in. Good girl. That's it. So in front of me on my left is the pavilion where a lot of the conference talks have been held. And um, we need to actually turn left, please, I do. There you go. Good girl. Find the way. Oh, look, and here's the fountain. Yay, pretty fountain. Take me to the fountain without throwing me in. Good girl. Yes. That's pretty. Good girl. Are you finding the way? Good girl. Yeah. Right. Don't take me in the fountain, Ida. I do not want to have a shower. Ah, dog, take me. Get off your fuck face. <laughs> My dog wants to take me into this fountain. So I just found out that I'm going to be one of the speakers closing the closing panel at Traverse 19. So that's super exciting. If you have any questions, especially to do with community or well-being, then ask. And I look forward to seeing you there. Bye. Casey Neistat, but they forget to be themselves, which is the best way you can be. Nobody can replicate you and who you are, and, and that's what our audiences come back to us over and over. The moment you start trying to replicate what somebody else does, that's it, you're done. Uh, at the beginning, it was more just about um, educating people around me, and the kind of more traffic I've gotten, the more experiences I've had, 
the more I want to communicate to the wider world that travel is for everyone. And as long as there's people in place that want to support you, that you know, communities can be found. I think you came to the, the Rotterdam Traverse was your first one. It was, yeah. And did you find community there and the answers to the things you wanted to know? Yeah, 100%. Like, I have been part of so many little communities over the years because being disabled, you get lumped into a community. And then being blind, you get lumped into a different community. Um, but actually, the travel community is probably my favourite community of all because you are the people that have your eyes literally open to everyone. Um, you're welcoming to anyone from any background, culture, style, race, religion. And you just take people at face value. And in the workshops, but every other occasion when we're together, it's always Sassy who's got a question and speaks out. So we thought we'd put her on stage, and that way she could, uh, she could let her in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anybody got any more thoughts on it? Here we go. I guess someone who was in a wheelchair, um, I used to be so mobility impaired that I didn't have to use a wheelchair a lot. Um, so, from that perspective, um, you know, if, if you think that monuments, um, unless they're like grade one list, generally everything can be adapted. And if you genuinely believe that someone with a disability because they're into travel would appreciate going to um, this castle, but actually it's got a flight of stairs to get into it, you could mention if you're on there, especially as a press trip with the tourism board, hey, did you know that like there are ways to make this more accessible by including lifts that don't cost you because the government pays for it? And people don't know that. Um, so it's just a case of, if, if you think that it would be enjoyable for other people, just mention it just like you would on your own blog, like I had a great time. And that's kind of where the angle I'm coming from is I go places and I say I loved it because and it wasn't accessible to my peers because. This is the face you pull when your ice cream is melting faster than you see it. We are Blind Girl vlogging again and we're in a cable car going up the mountain in Trentino. Ida's enjoying it, well I think she is anyway. Um, I'm hoping there's some really beautiful scenery. What do you think, is it? Is it all glass? Yeah. So what can we see for the, the VIPs of the world who are going to be watching this video? There is mountains all around us, there is a river down on our left. Multiple bridges, you can see sort of between the valley and just the whole city of Trenton. Oh, beautiful. Things like this, this is where I miss not having sight because I just know how beautiful it is. But I can take you along with me and I'm enjoying the journey. I was enjoying staring out the window and you know, seeing big open glass and like we're going higher and higher and I don't understand why. But she is very well traversed and travelling on different modes of transport. Oh, we're slowing down. We're getting near the top. Ciao ragazzi. Welcome to Venice. We are sailing past Venice train station. This is a large flat building with a bird-like crest in the centre. There are lots of people sat outside on the waterfront and milling about walking in and out of the station. We are sailing past the Hotel Continental, which is a peach club building. Next to that is a green building, a very light green and a yellow building. Three gondolas are being paddled past the boat as it's stopped at one of the ports. They are paddling along in front of a red coloured building with a balcony and another building with a large balcony all looking out upon the Grand Canal. A still image of a gondolier and a gondola without any passengers. A narrow Venice street lined with shop fronts and full of people. A large white marble building lit up in the dark Venice streets. Grant is stood on a bridge over the Grand Canal with a large cathedral in the back left corner. Sassy and Ida both stand on the same wooden bridge with a cathedral in the background. Ida is walking with little booties on in Verona because of the heat. She is flailing her legs around and just flopping about. It is quite hilarious. We had a few hours to spare in Verona before our flight home, so we decided to do a few of the touristy things. This included going to visit Juliet's house, seeing her balcony and the statues and everything surrounding it. So in the scene right now, you can see some tunnels with lots of graffiti on it, 
Lots of people putting love and declarations to one another with love hearts and initials. It then pans up to Juliet's balcony and then the statue of Juliet herself. I would highly recommend going if you're a fan of Shakespeare, but as a blind person, it wasn't that interesting. I'm not gonna lie. Last blind girl vlogging of Italy. We are having a last Arrivederci uh, for our food, even though we've had really amazing food today because we're getting in quite late at night and you know you get a slice of pizza, you get a drink and you get a little dessert for 10 euros which is extortionate really but at the same time we like pizza even after a whole week in Italy. Say hello. Uh, it's quite a big pizza. Yeah I've noticed that it's quite big so I might tuck into it in a second. The pie is absolutely pooped. And uh, yeah, I'm now wearing my like cool trouser things for the plane. And I think we're gonna tuck in. Okie dokie, speak to you on the plane. Ciao ragazzi. Thanks so much for watching Blind Girl Goes to Italy vlog. We had an amazing time with thanks to Traverse and Visit Trentino for putting on such an amazing conference. Venice and Verona were awesome too, and we plan to go back very soon. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!